Kelly from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Friday, June 28th. Okay, so we have a lot going on here today. Let's just start with the fact that we have the moon in Pisces going void, of course, at 446 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're locking into Aries energy at 453 a.m. So first of all, the transition from Pisces energy to Aries energy is always a welcomed one because, of course, we were all up in the fields in that Pisces energy, very reflective, if you will, on recent struggles, tough love life lessons in order to wrap up a karmic cycle, especially emotionally speaking, a lot came to the surface for our awareness and for integration. The Aries energy is where we start fresh. Aries energy is the very first sign of the Zodiac. So we're entering into a new emotional cycle. That Aries energy has no want, need, or desire to look back. I think we've done enough of that reflecting, if you will. We want to kind of set our eyes, our sights on a new perspective, a new way of understanding some of the struggle, some of the hardship that we just went through. That Aries energy is essentially putting a pep back in our step, lending us the warrior type of spirit, mood, and attitude in order to cut through the challenges, the obstacles that we are going to face while beginning to actually move in a different path, in a different direction as we move forward. Now, not very far into this Aries energy, we're going to have the last quarter moon pop off. So the last quarter moon of any moon cycle is a time where we're taking a good look back to the last new moon, which happened to be in the Gemini energy. We have to take a good look at all that has changed, all that has transpired. Again, reminder that new moon in Gemini really presented the two different options, two different paths, two different directions that we were debating between. We essentially leaned into one of those choice points as we entered into cancer season through that solstice gateway, that karmically speaking, locked in our particular choice. We had the first of two back-to-back full moon in Capricorns take off right as we entered into this cancer season. And of course, Saturn, the Lord of Karma, was in his rulership over that full moon in Capricorn. And guess what? This is Saturn's last day of being direct. Saturn will be going retrograde here Saturday, June 29th, and that will carry us into the fall. We have some restructuring to do. We have some review, some reflection to do. We have some rebuilding to do, and we are definitely going to get down to the nitty gritty of what all of that means from now until eclipse season in the fall. So with all of that being said, we're in for a very choppy, energetic day. We're going to kick things off with the moon in Pisces. So there is a lot of feels. There is a lot of reflection. There is a lot of spiritual energy there. Again, recognizing our struggles as the tough love life lessons that we need in order to build our spiritual selves up. We're shifting into the moon in Aries. We have Mercury popping off with Jupiter and Chiron, which is definitely going to kind of mess with our headspace a little bit. The energy in our emotional realm is building to a critical crisis point where the reflection back to the new moon, to the full moon, and to where it is that we are now, we have some aha moments. We have some epiphanies that need to pop off in order for us to close the door, emotionally speaking, on this past month and prepare us to dive into a brand new chapter. And again, lingering in the background, Saturn is reaching the pivotal point where he's at a standstill and he is about to go right retrograde. So there is this heaviness. There is this, I'm going to call it negative narrative that is constantly trying to push through the positive outlook that we're trying to have here today. And with all of these energies popping off, we definitely have to learn how to ride the waves. So with all of that being said, there are nine different aspects taking place here today. Six of them are going to involve the moon. The moon still in this Pisces energy, is going to semi-square, create a little bit of tension and conflict with Mars. Mars is the god of war. He rules over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our action, even our anger. Mars is in Taurus energy, thus the very low, slow, steady pace 
I hesitate to say pace because I don't think many of us are moving forward very fast here. Um, this is the state of paralysis that we are in because we're trying to kind of build up our self-confidence, build up our self-esteem. We're trying to understand the lay of the land that we're currently standing in. We're trying to understand how to build inspiration, motivation, determination to continue this path, the struggle, this transitional period of kind of closing out the old and really start building and creating and giving birth to the new. So the moon interacting with Mars in this way, because it is not a favorable aspect, we have ants in our pants. We're seeing little frustrations, little agitations, little activations really pop off our inner emotional realm where we're just wanting to fast forward through these parts. We just want to be done. We just want to be over with. We want to tie up these loose ends. We want to hit that fast forward button. We want to find ourselves free and clear of a lot of the weight, a lot of the debris, a lot of the loose ends that we're still having to tie up. So the moon goes ahead, comes to the very last degree of the Pisces energy. And what do we find there? Neptune. Neptune is in his rulership in this Pisces energy, but at the 29th critical crisis degree, we are going to have an epiphany of sorts, an aha moment of sorts. A conjunction is just as much a beginning as it is an ending. What we're ending is the emotional weight the pain, the trauma, the reflection back. What we're beginning is this new renewal in our soul and our spirit, this new vision, this new goal, this new dream. However, because there is this back and forth, because there is this cha-cha-cha that we're in right now, being in a water season, and of course, the moon being in Pisces is another water aspect to this water season. This is a wave crashing upon us, beating us down, and then helping us to see at the peak of that wave what is actually happening, what is actually awaiting us, what is actually out there for us once we can close the door on the past. This is the very last aspect that the moon is going to be making before going void, of course. So 4.46 a.m., the moon is void. We are only in this for about just over 15 minutes, so not a huge window where things are shaky, things are uncertain, things are unstable, but a window of uncertainty nonetheless. We shift into that Aries energy at 4.53 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and then we sit in that transition. 7.06 a.m., we have Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves in this Cancer energy, semi-squaring Jupiter, the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, and blessings in the Gemini energy. So first of all, this is going to, A, create a lot of confusion in our headspace. Why? Well, because Mercury is involved. Secondly to that, Mercury is in Cancer energy. So we're still very much attached to the old situation, the old circumstances, the old idea. We are very much focused on the past. Jupiter wants us to be thinking about the future, but of course he's in Gemini energy, so he's illuminating two very different paths that we have available to us at this particular point in time. Let me also say we have to watch out for big ideas. Now, big ideas can be great. The big ideas can be overinflated. They can be over-exaggerated. They can be a little bit dramatic. We may not have a realistic view on what our options actually are. And if we do, they could be 100% bigger and appear way bigger than they actually could be. We want to kind of just respect the fact that our perspective is not in alignment with reality. We're trying to make sense of situations, of information, of circumstances before us that we are not going to make logical and practical sense out of because we are activating our old pain patterns, emotionally speaking. So if you're having a good idea, it's probably over-exaggerated. If you're having a bad idea, it's definitely over-exaggerated. We are kind of rushing the process of reaching a well-informed decision at this particular point in time. We should not be making decisions at this particular time. Um, and we're rushing the process. And so because of that, we're missing some details. 
We are over-exaggerating our emotions, our ideas. We are all a little bit extra with our emotions here because that's what Jupiter kind of brings into the mix is we're a little bit extra, a little bit dramatic, a little bit attention-seeking. And therefore, it is a very hard task to actually digest some of the situations and circumstances, some of the information, some of the challenges that we just went through from a logical, practical standpoint. Caution, caution, caution. Also, be very cautious with your conversations because you have, under this influence, a high probability to just talk, to hear yourself talk, to tell a story that isn't actually accurate or true. Again, an overinflation of the emotion that we're currently sitting in. The moon, now in Aries energy, is going to sextile beautiful interaction with Pluto, the great transformer who is retrograde in this Aquarius energy. So again, Pluto's retrograde is highlighting for us the inner power struggle between the old version of self, new version of self, ego versus higher self, inner realm versus outer realm. There's all kinds of complexities where we're kind of torn between different choices, different decisions, different perspectives, different feelings, and therefore different parts of self. This is a positive interaction. Again, the moon in Aries is fired up, ready to go. We are ready to break away from the heaviness, from the weight, emotionally speaking, that we've been sitting in with this moon in Pisces energy. Pluto is there to help us change, to help us transform, to boss us up, to empower us to a new level of power and control over our emotional realm. This is going to be a good thing for a lot of people. That takes place at 7 18 a.m. It isn't until about two o'clock that we have our next aspect, which isn't a good one. It is not a favorable one. Again, the energy building towards this last quarter moon is always kind of putting ants in our pants, frustrating us, putting us in a pressure cooker situation. But at two o'clock, we have Mercury, again, ruler of the mental plane, getting into the boxing ring and fighting it out with Chiron, the wounded healer in Aries energy. So what this is going to do is, first of all, we're not feeling so good, so hot about our inner dialogue, our inner narrative. We're not seeing things from a positive mindset as we wish that we would. We are highly critical and super judgmental, especially when it's coming to ourselves. And so this could definitely, again, open up and expose the wounds that we currently have raw, real and vulnerable at this present moment. We may become hypersensitive to criticism, to judgment coming at us from external influences because of course the inner realm we cannot be harder on ourselves than we are at this particular point and so anybody else trying to come at us with criticism or judgment like we're just not open to it at this particular point um, it's okay in our minds to beat ourselves up and break ourselves down but it's not okay for other people to be trying to do that to us at this particular point so it's almost as if like there is a split we realize that we want to be more positive, that we want to be inspired and motivated to kind of, you know, close the door on these particular chapters. But now we're kind of second guessing ourselves. It doesn't feel good. It feels like, again, we're rushing the process here. It feels like we are rushing to the point where we're not listening to our gut. We're not listening to our intuition. And at this point, we cannot afford to take the wrong path. OK, so we need to calm ourselves down. We need to find that calm, grounded middle point to be operating from, which is a very hard thing to do because at 554 p.m., the moon in Aries energy is going to get in the boxing ring, square off with the sun in cancer energy. This is what gives us our last quarter moon in Aries. So this is the breakdown slash breakthrough point. This is the point where we're realizing what it is that we need to move away from and the warrior type of mood and attitude that we have to really embody in order to pivot and start moving on and moving forward. This does not feel good. It is not supposed to feel good. It is going to highlight the anger, the agitation that we have to kind of transmute into something better. Again, it's a beautiful energy, a beautiful fuel source to inspire us to keep 
the train moving, to keep the party going for us to move into a new path, into a new direction. Shortly thereafter, we have the moon in this Aries energy sextiling Jupiter. So this is a beautiful interaction because it means that A, we're coming out of the funk, we're coming out of the friction, we're coming out of the tension, and B, it's giving us a new emotional disposition where optimism and confidence are coming back, where clarity in our mental plane is coming back, where there's a strength, a boldness, a bravery in our emotions coming back, and we are thinking about the paths now available to us. We're thinking about the future. We're thinking about the different options, the different opportunities that we have to choose from at this particular point in time. And everything just seems a lot lighter, a lot brighter, especially compared to the earlier part of the day. The sun in cancer energy is then going to make a positive interaction with Jupiter. This is bringing our life force energy front and center. We are understanding now what we have to be building within us as far as a stronger emotional foundation and disposition for us to be operating from in order for us to grow. We're starting to understand the karmic life lessons that we are now in that are helping us to strengthen and build ourselves up to this new version of self that we've never met before. The sun and Jupiter coming together is a very beneficial energy. It's pulling us out of the funk. It's putting us in a better disposition mentally and emotionally. And it's triggering and activating this part of us that now wants to come out to play, that now wants to pursue a new path, that now wants to kind of grow through what it is that we're currently going through. The last thing that we have popping off here today is the moon in Aries energy semi-squaring, so creating a little bit of tension, a little bit of conflict with Uranus, the great awakener in this Taurus energy. So basically, we're not kind of falling off of the positivity train that we found ourselves on late in the day, but what we are doing is we're taking a good look out of the train window and we're recognizing the landscape on one side that we're coming from and the landscape on the other side that we would like to be moving into. Uranus, for the most part, brings us an epiphany. However, in this particular aspect, because we have ants in our pants and we're trying to fast forward through this very important transitional period, there is this element where we feel confused. We feel a pause because we're not able to move as fast enough as we would prefer. We are rapidly wanting to put situations behind us, but doing so in that way, avoiding really integrating those life lessons is really putting ourselves at a disadvantage. And so Uranus, the great awakener, is trying to highlight for us where the conflict, where the tension is in understanding where it is that we're coming from versus where it is that we want to go. There's a gap there. There's a distance there. And although we could be confused on how to bridge that gap and kind of, you know, fast forward through this uncomfortable chapter, we are starting to realize in our physical realm where routines, relationships, money matters, long-term visions and goals are concerned, what absolutely needs to change in order to free us up from some of the weight of the past and give us the space to start building something brand new in our future. <laughs>